Mrs. Soya Francis Poothingal, Assistant Professor, English Department, Eldo Mobizilis College, Kodamangalam. I am also an IELTS trainer at Milwaukee Academy, Kodamangalam. Well, today in this session, let's discuss a poem, The Old Prison, written by Judy Wright. This poem is included in the core text, Issues That Matter, for Common Course English in the second semester for undergraduate students of Mahatma Gandhi University. Before discussing the poem, let me give you a brief introduction on Judy Wright. You know, Judy Wright is an Australian poetess. She also fought for the rights of the Aboriginal Australians and for the cause of the environment. Do you know who Aboriginal Australians are? They are the indigenous people, I mean the natives of Australia who lived there prior to the European colonization. See, when you go through her writings, you come across so many imageries drawn from the natural environment. Fine, that's enough about Judith Wright. Now, let's discuss the poem, The Old Prison. See, from the very title, it's clear it's about an old prison. To be precise, it's about the ruined condition of a convict built jail at Trial Bay near Kempsey in New South Wales, Australia. Now, let me make it clear the background of the poem. You know, in 1816, a vessel, I mean a ship named Trial, was seized by some convicts aboard. Do you know what happened then? There arose a mutiny, I mean a conflict among these convicts for some money in the ship. As a result, the ship wrecked in the bay, in the deep sea. It sank along with the money. Since then, this bay has been named after the wrecked ship, Trial Bay. Moreover, this bay has become a place of shelter for coastal shipping. So, the prison labor was brought in to enlarge this area. In 1879, they started constructing a jail for the purpose of using prison labor. However, after its construction, this jail remained closed for a long period. But during the First World War, it was opened. You know, around 500 German prisoners were held there. And they were mostly the German soldiers who were captured from the battlefield. Just imagine the situation. Once they were brought in, that was the end of their life. They were confined to this prison till their death. They led a miserable, isolated, melancholic life far away from their homeland. Do you know what actually inspired Judy Wright to write a poem on this old prison? One day she happened to visit the site and she was greatly affected, I mean moved by the very sight of this disintegrated building, this old prison. She thought of the miseries, the feelings, the desolation and despair of the prisoners who once lived and labored there. The mood of the poem reflects the miseries, the hardships and severity of the prison life. Moreover, Judith Wright uses some imageries and figures of speech to recreate in the minds of the readers the stark picture of the prison life. Okay, let's go through the first stanza of the poem. The rows of cells are unroofed, a flute for the wind's mouth, who comes with a breath of ice from the blue caves of the south. The rows of cells are unroofed, a flute for the wind's mouth. See, from the picture of the prison, it's clear the rows of cells had no roof at all. They were unroofed. So these unroofed cells of prison act like a flute for the wind. It's an apt imagery, the wind playing a flute. Just imagine, 
when the wind blows in violently through the stone walls of the prison, it produces some powerful airy sounds that echo a wind passing through a float. Who comes with a breath of ice from the blue caves of the south? Breath of ice. This imagery evokes in us the chillness of the cold Arctic winter. And where does this wind come from? It comes from the blue caves, the deep sea of the south. This imagery of the blue caves again evokes a sad feeling, a gloomy atmosphere. Well, it's the second stanza now. O oh, dark and fierce day, the wind like an angry bee hunts for the black honey in the pits of the hollow sea. O oh, dark and fierce day, the day being dark and fierce, gives us an image of the sufferings of the prison life. The usual concept of the prison being unpleasant is made more specific through this image of the harsh environment. The wind like an angry bee hunts for the black honey. Here, the wind is personified and compared to an angry bee that hunts for black honey. You know, here Judy Wright uses a figure of speech simile when she compares the wind directly to an angry bee. And once again, the black honey reminds us of the shipwreck in 1816 that occurred just because of a conflict among convicts for some money in the ship. So this black honey represents the greedy nature of man. Here comes the third stance of the poem. Waves of shadow wash, the empty shell born bare, and like a born it sings a bitter song of air. Waves of shadow wash, the empty shell born bare. Waves of shadow wash. Just imagine the clouds passing quickly cast a ghost-like shadow on the rain prison. Meanwhile, the gloomy waves wash away the remains of the prison, leaving bare stones. Here, Judy tried portrays the image of a desolate prison devoid of life. The shell is empty now. The prison is empty. The devastation that had happened in course of time had exposed the building to its foundation, much similar to the bony figure of a prisoner. And like a bone, it sings a bitter song of air. You know, like a bone, the ruined prison has many stories to tell. The painful stories of the prisoners who once lived and labored there. The song is bitter. Do you know why the song is bitter? It is just because it tells the miseries and the painful stories of the prisoners. Just imagine the wind when blows in violently through the stone walls of the prison. It makes some powerful sounds that tells us the miseries of the prisoners. Here Judy Wright vividly presents the agony of the prison life. Well, now let me explain the fourth stanza. Who built and labored here? The wind and the sea say their cold nest is broken and they are blown away. Who built and labored here? The poetess wonders and asks who built this prison and labored here? Only the wind and the sea alone know it as they are the only monolithic witness to the events that had taken place here. Monolithic witness means that which remains unchanged. The wind and the sea say the cold nest of the prisoners is broken and they are blown away by the ravages of time. You know, the prisoners were living in coldness, that is, the gloomy prison. The prisoners are described as being in nest, but their nest lacks security and warmth of human love and relationship. 
you know their place of shelter is similar to the insecure nest built by sea birds on the face of a cliff cliff means a vertical rock face okay now let's see how judy cried concludes her poem the old prison they did not breed no love each in his cell alone cried as a wind now cries through this flute of stone they did not breed no love each in his cell alone you know the prisoners led a solitary life in their respective cells so they neither bred nor reproduced they never enjoyed the warmth of human love and relationship cried as a wind now cries through this flute of stone you know here judy cried uses the image of wind playing a flute twice in this poem in the first stanza and the last stanza just to evoke in the minds of the readers the solitary wail of the prisoners the prisoners might have cried miserably in their cells just like the wind now cries through the flute of stone it implies that the miserable ghosts of the prisoners are still here and the wind that blows in through the stone walls of the prison making some airy sounds never allow it to be a happy place so that's end of the last stanza thus judy cried in her poem the old prison sketches the picture of a dark desolate prison devoid of life it reflects the sufferings endured by the prisoners and sufferings of the humanity at large i'm sure while reading the poem you will be able to feel and sense the miseries of the prisoners who once lived and labored there well that's end of the session hope you enjoyed the session thank you for watching